How can we use Kotlin coroutines to improve our app's readability? If you didn't know, coroutines is Kotlin's way of doing a asynchronous task in a different way. With Android, we, whenever we do a asynchronous task, such as from a networking library, like Retrofit, Volley, or um, OKHTP, we usually have to do something within a callback. Now callbacks are a little bit messy. You'll soon find that you have an entire class full of callbacks. Um, and callbacks, you have to change your code within to use them. Because they're a callback, you have to wait to use them, and, and you can't go from the callback to the main thread and do your code in a certain way. You have to change the way you use your code. And Coroutines is fixing that. Now we need to add Enco and Coroutines first. So first thing, go to Enco Commons. That is pretty much the basis of the Enco library. Very short version of the library. Doesn't have all of the fancy features within it, so just get this out dependency. And also the Enco Coroutines. We need this to do coroutines, obviously. Um, and my version is 0 0.10.1, so I, that's what I put in here. And let's get started. Right here we have Retrofit doing a, a NQ. If you don't know about Retrofit, what NQ does is it pretty much does a network request. And every network request it puts into a queue. And we have an on failure, that's pretty much if the network request failed, or on response, if the network request responded successfully. Now let's do coroutines, and let's see if that's a little easier to see, read. First thing, we have our asynchronous task. Now this is different from the ANCO asynchronous task. This is the coroutines one. Now if we go to the our import statements, we can see the UI is from coroutines experimental. And yes, it's experimental still. But the asynchronous task, the async from coroutines, don't get confused with the red with the original ANCO async. Use the coroutines one. You have to delete the the import and then re-import it by doing alt enter, doing the coroutines. Now in this block right here, we're still in the UI thread. That is the UI thread. We want to do that because there are many times where we do an asynchronous task, and right after that we want to do something with the UI. That's why we have callbacks. Um, now to get into the background thread, we have to do BG for background. Now this is the background thread. We do this is the main thread. Okay. Now we want to do the same thing here, except we don't want to do a callback. So we're going to do call execute which is going to execute on the thread that's on and then just do body which we're going to get the results of that now we're not going to put this into a variable and then do a bunch of fancy stuff with it in here we're actually going to put this background thread into a variable like data what this is doing is this is taking the this result from call to execute that body and returning it to this variable data. So it's pretty much doing it's returning all the execute body. That's we don't do the return. Now we do our UI stuff in the UI. So this is the main thread. So easy it is to go from the background thread to the UI thread without doing this whole um, callback thing over here. Right here, um, 
Now to get our data, all we have to do is just do gal weather weather equals data. But we don't do it exactly that way because if we do that, data is going to give give us a deferred weather. What that means is it's something that's waiting. So data, we don't have data yet, and what we have to do is we have to wait till that thread is done. How do we do that? Because this is the UI thread, we can't just wait for on the UI thread, everything will be, be non-responsive. That's where a wait comes from. What this does, it doesn't wait for the things to finish. It, it does, but it, it does asynchronously. So this is still an asynchronous task. This is a background thread. What this is saying is a wait saying I will not run this line of code or below that until this is finished. But we're only blocking code in this async function here. We're not blocking code down here. We're only blocking code in this async right here. So it is asynchronous. And if we can take these two lines of code and put it here, we are doing the same exact thing we're doing down here. And now if we can kind of measure if just the lines of code that, that this isn't a big thing. This is obviously a lot cleaner than this. If you have, you know, five or six of them in one class, this would be a lot cleaner because it create a new, another callback. And here we would have to do, you know, call NQ and then do it all over again. Having, you know, 40 lines of code. And here all we have to do is just do another background. That's it. So to compare, this one is, you know, seven lines of code and this one's 11 lines of code. That's not a lot, but when, you know, like I said before, we can just do another background and then run another background task on top of that here we have to do another a uh, another full callback of on failure and on response again and again and again and that really adds up and we also don't have to change how our code is here because it's all right here we can change our ui and we can change our background thread stuff right here and we don't have to change our code anywhere